Hello, and welcome to STEAM for Tweens, the science of snow. Today, you'll learn about the science of snow and grow your own crystals, along with Miss Jennifer. You can either use the materials that you've picked up or gathered around the house. And now, for the science of snow, here's Miss Jennifer. Hi, everyone. Welcome to STEAM for Tweens. I'm Miss Jennifer at the Warrington Library. Today, we're going to talk about the science of snow. If you picked up your supplies here at the library, we gave you a plate and instructions for cutting out a paper snowflake. You can also look up a template online or just follow closely along when we do this part of the activity later. You'll also need to gather one third of a cup of hot water, a spoon, a pair of scissors, and a plate large enough to hold your snowflake. Also, you will need table salt. A snowflake starts as a grain of dust floating in a cloud. Water vapor in the air sticks to the dust grain and the resulting droplet turns into ice. Not all snowflakes look like six pointed stars like we've seen before here. Some look like needles, some look like prisms, but all snowflakes have six sides or points because of the way they form. Each snowflake falls through a different part of the air and is exposed to slightly different atmospheric conditions. This makes them all different from each other. The shape of a snowflake is determined primarily by the temperature and the humidity at which it is formed. Snowflakes form in a wide variety of intricate shapes, leading to the saying that no two are alike. Over the years, crystallographers have been classifying snow crystals into different categories based on their arrangement of atoms. Tables of snowflake types have become larger with time. In the 1930s, there were 21 different types of snowflakes. In the 1940s, that number doubled. The number doubled again in the 1960s, and in 2013, a new table appeared with 121 different snowflake types. The snowflakes in this picture are actually photos of snowflakes taken in the early 1900s. They were taken by a photographer named Wilson Bentley, or Snowflake Bentley, as he was known. He was the first known photographer of snowflakes and photographed more than 5,000 of them using a camera and microscope together to capture the images. He never found two that looked the same. He wrote this book, Snowflakes in Photographs, that we have here at the library. You can check this out. Um, it was called Snow Crystals when it was originally published in 1931, and it shows 2,500 different pictures of snowflakes. My goodness. Bentley was a pioneer in photomicrography, the photographing of very small objects, especially of snowflakes. Snowflakes are difficult to photograph because they melt so quickly. Bentley stood in the winter cold for hours at a time, waiting patiently until he caught falling flakes. Once a snowflake landed, he carefully used a feather to place it under the camera lens. His equipment was set up outside so that the snowflakes would not melt. You can read more about Mr. Bentley in this book, Snowflake Bentley by Jacqueline Bridges Briggs Martin with pictures by Mary Azarian. And this book won the Caldecott Medal for illustrations. So come by and check this out. Today, we are going to make paper snowflakes and use a salt water solution to watch crystals grow right there in your own house. Table salt is a mineral called sodium chloride. Minerals are substances that form naturally in the ground. The salt crystal is often used as an example of crystalline structure because as you'll see, sodium chloride crystals are shaped like cubes. We'll start by cutting a paper snowflake. So grab your instruction sheet and I'll tell you what to do right here across the top. I'm going to turn my camera down so we can see our workspace. The first step is to cut out your square. 
Now, this process can be a little tricky without a guide, but once you learn the method, you can make as many snowflakes in as many shapes and sizes as you'd like. So, we are going to take our square and fold it in half and follow the lines on your template here. So, now we have a triangle. And we're going to fold this again in half, following the lines on your template. So we have a slightly smaller triangle. And now comes the part that's a little bit tricky. We're going to fold it into thirds along these lines here. So we are going to fold this to the back and press that down. And then we're going to fold this to the back and press that down as well. And so we have a bit of a cone shape and you'll see that the shaded part with your guidelines here is facing up. The next step is to take a pair of scissors and cut off all of this extra part on the end. We're not going to need that so you can cut it away. And then we're going to just follow the pattern of the snowflake and cut away the darker parts of our sheet of paper. So we're going to cut here and remove this edge. And we're going to cut here and remove this edge. And you might need help from an adult with this if you just have kid scissors, because the several sheets of paper can be hard to cut through at the same time sometimes. Now we're going to cut our last part here on the end. And when you're done with all of your cutting, you should have a little tiny piece of paper that when you unfold will come out looking like a snowflake. And so this is going to be the surface that we use to grow our crystals. So the next step is, I'm gonna turn the camera back up, to make a salt solution. So we need our table salt and we need our hot water in a cup and we need our spoon. So we are going to start with our hot water. You don't need to boil it, absolutely not. You just need to run your tap until it gets nice and hot and warm. Um, and then tablespoon by tablespoon, we are going to add salt into what is about a third of a cup of water until it can't hold any more salt. So we're going to fill our spoon. We're going to dump it in and stir, stir, stir. And we're going to see the salt start to dissolve in the water. And we're going to add some more. So pour your salt into your spoon, add it to your water and stir, stir, stir. The goal is to add as much salt as the water will hold to make a saturated solution. A saturated solution is a solution that in this case, um, it, the solution is water and it contains the maximum amount of solute that is capable of being dissolved. In this case, the solute is salt. Warm water will dissolve the salt faster than cold because hot water has more energy than cold water. The molecules in the warm water move faster come into contact with the salt more often and cause it to dissolve faster. When you see grains of salt starting to gather at the bottom, which I am starting to see now, some salt grains underneath the bottom of my cup, uh, and so the, the salt is not dissolving in the water anymore, then that means you're done. You have a saturated solution. So we are going to turn our camera down again a little bit going to get out our plate. Now, if you are gathering your supplies from home, you may want to use a styrofoam plate um, as the colors may bleed from your snowflake um, onto your plate. This happened to me when I tried it at home, but the plate did come clean when, when washed. So just know that that might happen. We're going to place your paper snowflake on your plate and pour just enough salt water to cover the snowflake. Now, it will probably take a day or two to start to see crystals, so you want to make sure you have a clear area out of the way to set your plate. 
you want to try and minimize the plate being moved or nudged, and then we will wait and watch. So we're going to pour our water over the snowflake. And you might not be able to fit just the tips of the snowflake in the water, and that's okay. We have plenty of room to grow our crystals, and we're going to make sure that it's covered in water just like that. And now we're going to let it set and wait and watch. Over time, the water will evaporate, which means the water will change from a liquid to a gas or vapor. The more water you use, the longer it will take to evaporate. The temperature in your house will also play a part because the warmer it is, the faster the water will evaporate. As the salt solution cools and the water evaporates, the atoms, sodium and chlorine, are no longer separated between molecules. They begin to bond together and then bond further, forming the special cube-shaped crystals, which we see as salt. And I have a final example here of what that will look like. So here is a completed snowflake with our cube shaped crystals on it. Can you all see the cubes? All of our little sparkly cube shaped crystals here have formed on our snowflake and made it nice and shiny. So this is what it might look like after a day or two. The snowflakes are beautiful winter decorations. And now that you know the process, you can make many more to decorate your home. I hope you all enjoyed our program today. Feel free to come by the library to check out some other books about winter weather. We have many to choose from. And don't forget to um, check out our STEAM program next month, which will be Gumdrop Engineering. Uh, you can register for a supply bag for everything you'll need to complete the program. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you enjoy some winter weather. Bye-bye.